when you use the expression go with the flow, have you heard that? Go with the flow. What does that mean to you? What kind of impression does that create, especially in the West, when somebody says, hey, go with the flow? Um, to me, you know, sort of don't let, uh, don't let external, don't be distracted too much or let them affect your performance or um, whatever task you're, you're engaged in. Don't let external distractions um, disrupt your, your um, um, what's the word, your uh, motivation. Or your equilibrium or, um, or your <coughs> mental. Balance or uh, your momentum, you know, keep, 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 keep the momentum um, going, you know, and don't uh, be too distracted by things that you can't control necessarily. Yes. Okay, that's correct. And that is a very good description of flow. But a lot of people, especially from the hippie generation, which I'm from, Going with the flow man, go get on a, go get a joint and let go. <coughs> go with the flow man, he's going with the flow. That was what it meant. You heard that reference of you guys are too young. That's what also meant. Okay, then one of the things I say, go with the flow, and then how can you have purpose? Purposeful. You see? How can you say, be purposeful and then go with the flow? That's what a lot of students used to say, especially in the early days when this go with the flow expression. The whole idea is that you must define your purpose with a lot of focus. And then remember in the metaphor description in the chapter when Pete is reading the grandpa's manuscript of the 12 steps, it says once you give the guidance, end of phase two, you let the arrow fly. And the chapter is called The Arrow Flies, The Flight of the Arrow. When you let the arrow fly, you don't worry. You see? You don't worry. You wait till it lands and then you worry. Otherwise you can fret. Don't fret. Act, let go. That's also part of go with the flow. That is when you go with the flow. And the book talks about it in that chapter, in the narrative part. Now, there is another question. One of the guys said that in reviewing the book, the book that this individual reviewed, I think it was Chris Miller, Chris Miller did a good job. So I sent him an email after I read it. It said that I didn't see, although it may be implied, I didn't see the word courage. You know, courage was an attribute somewhere. I couldn't see it here. Well, there is the path of duty where they give the example of the Sikh Guru asking for five heads. Any of you got that far? You read that? Five heads? The path of duty. It's to do with uh, chopping five heads off, head off on a mountain. Read it in the, You didn't need the narrative, did you? You guys should read the narrative. That's going to be in the final exam. All the questions on the narrative. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Where it's commitment. What do you think? It took courage to give your head, offer your head. Another thing, when you go to the description, so you guys should read the narrative. The narrative is, was the whole textbook earlier. The other stuff is not worth as much as the narrative. Read the narrative. Read the story of Pete. That's the big story of how he transforms from a taker to an absolute servant leader. Okay, you just see that. That's the whole point of this, this using that narrative in there. So courage, when he picks up his grandpa's manuscript, he reads that. And you know what he reads there? From phase one to phase two, it takes courage. In other words, you cannot progress to the 12 steps without courage. So that's where the courage is. Now I don't write five paragraphs on it. So Chris, I hope you are listening. I sent him an email. I told him, go read that. That's where courage comes. Because it's like you decided you want to cross the stream. Because there's a beautiful flower you can bring for your beloved. That's your vision, <clears throat> to make your beloved happy. Right? That's a vision of an action. The, the reality check, step two is what? There is a river separating me, but I am a swimmer. I can, I can go across. But also the rea reality is this is a Himalayan stream. It is ice cold, chilly water, right? But I made the commitment, I'm going to bring this flower back for her. Now what does it take? Now the next step is goal is to get there. 
Goal is to get there and get back, right? To go get there, pluck the flower, to come it back. But how do you go? That's the end of phase one, goal is the phase two, right? How are you going to step out there? What does it take to do it? Courage. To, to, and then after goal, but it takes courage to plunge into the stream. It's icy water. So that's what I meant by that. And I literally used this example. I didn't say the stream example, but that's what it takes courage to plunge in. So it takes courage to act. Otherwise, you sit there and do the whole planning. You go through the 12 steps, but you don't ever implement it. So you've got to go in and do it. Now, there's a third place where I talk about courage. It's in the appendix about the 10 actions you can take to change your life. And one of those first actions is, the preamble to that action is act, don't fret. What does fret mean? Sit and worry. That's courage. Right? So the path of duty has a lot of courage. Go read that chapter again. And how, how Joe Sages tells Pete the story about how these five martyrs do. Now the other thing, we talked about commitment and uh, Commitment and uh, involvement, right? Yes. I can't say it takes the pig any courage, but you know the difference. You know the story of the pig? Mm. I should repeat it for those guys who haven't heard it, right? So I, this story of a friend of mine, he's a former car dealer, mega car dealer, now he has some NASDAQ uh, sports teams. Very interesting fellow. But he has interesting stories, so a lot to teach, learn from these guys. So we were sitting down and having breakfast, and he said, you know, Prem, he likes his little stories. What's the difference between courage and involvement? I said, no, but tell me, you know, because I know something interesting is going to come. And he says, you know, hey, you see this egg here? You know, yeah, you see this ham? I said, yeah. He says, well, the egg represents involvement, and the ham represents courage. I still didn't get it, so I said, how come? He said, well, you know, the chicken was involved in producing the egg, but he said the pig was totally committed <coughs> to producing the ham. It was totally gone. So that's it. So if you do it willingly, then it will be courage, like those guys giving their head. But the pig did not demonstrate courage. The pig was just dependent, just 